How do you get a domesticated herd to move from a field, a system in which it's been grazing for 20, 50 years, this kind of system, to this field over here, this new field, because we have reluctance to change. We like familiarity, we like routine. You do it by various techniques, one of which is revolution. Most revolutions are bloodless. You have cultural revolutions, sexual revolutions, along with that comes the music revolutions, etc. These literally are designed to alter and direct culture, knowing what kind of culture they'll have at the very end of it too. They know exactly what kind of culture they want to come out of it. You also can do it through crisis creation. Crisis after crisis has been hit on the people of the world since 9-11 happened. And we must understand that the techniques that are used abroad are also used at home in warfare. And we heard the term shock and awe. Shock and awe on the hard, the hard force level, as they call it, is bombs, uh, all kinds of acoustic equipment to nullify enemies, scare the hell out of them through voice to skull and so on, which was used in Gulf War I, and it's all over the, the British media. But you can also use shock and awe on your domestic people. You do it by crisis after crisis until the public are so terrified. See, the average person has a sort of confidence that they build up where they, can, they think, I can manage most things that come my way. Whatever little crisis in my life, what happens to other people, I can deal with. When all those around you are getting scared at the same time as you because they're losing their jobs, they've been threatened with pandemics, terrorists everywhere, terrifying people to even get on subways, and so on. And all those around you, as I say, are also in the same boat. You tend to be more easily directed by the powers that be to come out and speak with authority and confidence over you. Shock and awe, as I say, is a technique of making a person and a whole population punch drunk. The average person can handle one major crisis in their personal life, maybe two at the same time. It's understood in psychology and many, many studies that if you have maybe three to four crises hitting you personally in your life at the same time, you will literally go into an incredible depression, a reactive depression you can't cope. That's understood. Apply that technique on a whole population. The thing is, there's not one of these crises that we're being told about that you personally can do anything about. What can you do about terrorism if it really exists all over the place? It's out of your hands, you're helpless. What can you do about a coming pandemic? It's out of your hands, you're helpless. What can you do about a nuke getting set off? You can't, you're helpless. The message you're getting is that you're utterly helpless to defend, help, or save yourself. That is complete shock and awe tactic that's been used not only in the US and Canada, but across the world. Same strategy, because we're already global with the global society running us all. Massive psychology and warfare techniques in psychology has been used across the planet to make us succumb to fear and crises, none of which we can actually do anything about on an individual level. Therefore, the leaders are presented to us on screen with uniforms or business suits and ties as politicians who speak with confidence, all scripted of course, and they seem to have everything under control. You're now basically a fearful slave looking up to the powerful master to defend and protect you. That's the simple technique of it.